All right, so some properties. Some properties of this in integral. First of all, it's a martingale. And this process, I of t, which is the integral, is a martingale. It has a, a mean zero. If it's a martingale, it has to have a mean zero because it starts with zero. Expectation value of a martingale is equal to its initial value, and i of zero is integral from zero to zero, so it's a zero. So it's a it's a martingale, and as a martingale, it's a, its uh, expectation is equal to the initial value, uh, and therefore zero. Let me just uh, kill this thing here. Okay, intuitively, before I go into the notation, uh, what does this mean? It mean from the finance point of view, it means W is a martingale. So it means if you are investing into a martingale price, which is a martingale, then your profits losses are also a martingale. Your gains process is a martingale. Well, this makes complete sense. If you are investing into a fair gamble in something which on average neither makes you profit nor, gain nor losses, then uh, if, if the stock price is like that, then, then your investment value, your portfolio value should also be like that. Okay? If the stock price is a martingale, your, your gains from and losses from that, process, from that stock should also be a martingale. Well, that's intuitively what it says in terms of finance. So it is a martingale, and this is kind of a full notation to, to write that down. Conditional expectation of the future value due at time t is equal to today's value up to time s. Okay, the mean is zero, that's this first equation. That's often useful to remember when we compute expected values. And you can also compute the variance. And the variance, since the mean is zero, variance is just the expected value of this martingale squared. Okay? By definition of the variance, if the mean is zero, the variance is, is the second moment, expected value of the random variable squared. And there is a formula, and the formula is exactly this thing we had in the previous slide. It's expectation of integral zero to t y squared of u du. Okay, and this was assumed, remember, to be finite. So that assumption really was an assumption uh, that, the, that the variance of the stochastic integral is finite. So this was the assumption. That's exactly the assumption that the, the variance is finite. You, you can build uh, and construct stochastic integrals without uh, the assumption that the variance is finite. Mm, we are not going to uh, worry about that in this course. We are going to, in our examples, Pretty much, it's going to be the, it's going to be satisfied that the, that the variance is finite, that this this thing is finite. Okay, so these are abstract stochastic integral properties, but they are useful to know. Uh, I am going to give you some idea why these things are true. It's not going to be in the in the assignment, homework assignment problems, or in the uh, or in the final exam, but if you are curious, then the next two slides uh, will, uh, if you are mathematically curious, in the next two slides will give you some idea why these properties are true. And the idea is going to be explained in the, mostly in a discretized framework. So let's start with the Martingale property, kind of trying to explain why this is a Martingale mathematically. We take the conditional expectation at time s of the future up to time t, and we want uh, we want to show that uh, it's equal to just this today's value up to time s. Well, kind of the same trick that we used before computing conditional expectations, you split into into part which is completely determined by your information on which you condition. So I'm going to split the integral from 0 to s, and then from s to t. Okay? I can do that. Integral from 0 t to t is equal to the integral from 0 to s, plus integral from s to t. And then I just split into two expectations. This one here 
Well, this integral is completely known if I know everything up to time s. If I know the history up to time s, then I know this integral because this integral goes only up to time s. So it's given this information, there is no expected value to take. This is just a constant. It's known. So I can forget about expected value, just this integral from 0 to s. So the remaining thing is to show that, that this is 0. And that the expectation of, uh, from s to t of y u dw, conditional expectation from time s, is 0. All right, this is what we want to show. All right, I'm going to show it in a discretized version. Okay. In a discretized version, where you split this integral into delta t uh, sums over uh, ti's, uh, then, then this would be a sum of terms like this. It would be a sum of expected values from the point of time s, from the point of view of time s, with tj and tj plus 1 being larger than s, of w tj plus 1 minus w of tj times y of tj. The, disc the discretized version of the integral will have these terms. If I show that expectation of all of those terms is zero, then the sum of these terms would also have the expectation zero, and then sum in the limit is the integral, and then one would have to prove that in the limit also the expectation is still zero. That's the technical part that we are not doing, but it can be done. So we do this trick that I think we did, I think we did before, the law of iterated expectations, which means that if I condition on, on more information, that doesn't change my, my expectation. Okay? S is less than Tj. So if I condition additionally on E of Tj, expectation with respect to the information up to time Tj, I'm not changing the original uh, expectation. Okay? Expected value with respect to less information of expected value with respect to more information is equal to the expected value with respect to less information. Why do I do that? I want to get rid of this guy. Why? Because I don't know anything about it, really. I know a lot about this increment of the brown emotion, but I don't know about why. By conditioning on Tj, I can bring y of tj out, because it's known, right? This guy is known if I know in the information up to time tj. So it behaves like a constant, and I can take it out. This is what I do in the next, next line. I take it out. I know it. From the point of view of this averaging, the information up to tj is known. I can take y of tj out. But now, once I took this guy out, this is easy, because this I know, we already did this before, this uh, argument. I know this is independent of this information at time tj. So I can actually forget about conditioning. Uh, the expected value is the same as without conditioning. It's zero. Expected value, it's zero. Okay? And therefore, uh, this is a discretized version. It's also true for the continuous version. Expected value of this is zero. And therefore, this is 0, and I prove my Martingale property. Expectation times s of the integral 0 to t is the integral from 0 to s. OK, that's the idea behind the Martingale property. And the only thing left to do is to look at the uh, idea behind the variance formula. So the variance in a discretized version would be the sum of the variances of, of squared moments of expectations of this type. Since the means are 0, the way you get the variance is, is uh, you square and take the expected value. So I'm, gonna, I'm, going to look at, I'm going to look at a term like this, expectation y squared t1 times w of t2 minus w of t1. So let me just let me just do it with t1 and t2 squared here. Let me compute this. I'm gonna I'm going to use the same trick. I'm gonna condition on t1, and then this guy becomes known, and I can take it out. 
Yeah. Condition on T1, that doesn't change the expectation, conditioning on more information. I take this out, and uh, here it would be expectation T1 as, as the first step, but then immediately I, I use the same argument as before, so in principle I will have T1 here, but th this, this difference, W of T2 minus W of T1, as before, is independent of uh, information up to T1, so whether I condition on T1 or not, it doesn't matter. So I can forget about this conditioning. Uh, so I'm just going to delete it. So conditioning or not doesn't matter because this that information is independent of this increment here, and also independent of the square of the incre increment. But I know what this expectation is. This is the variance of the increment by definition for the Brownian motion, that's the time length T2 minus T1. Right, so this is what I used. I wrote it separately here. Expectation T1 with respect to this is expectation without conditioning. So T2 minus T1. If you, if you add these things up, this, this is just delta T, right? So th this we can write this as delta t. So, so if I add these over, over time, so right, I will have something like summation, I can take expectation out, and this is expectation summation i, y squared of, of t i. Okay, uh, let's do it a little bit more carefully, y squared of t i, and then, uh, then delta t. But this in the limit is going to be an integral. It's going to be exactly what we want. It's going to be this. It's going to be this integral uh, of from 0 to t, or y squared of u du, the expectation of that integral. Right? And this is, uh, this is not a complete proof, not a rigorous proof, uh, but it gives you some idea how you would go about proving it if you wanted to, or, or at least it gives you some idea why this is true, and it maybe makes it less, less surprising. All right, so this is this set of slides. We learned how to, well, well learned somewhat, a little bit, about uh, how to build a stochastic integral. The main, the bottom line is we know it can be done. Ito did it for us. And we also discussed some properties and the formula for the variance and the Martingale property. So almost ready to use it in finance, not quite. We still have to do the famous Eta's rule. But we'll do that in the next set of slides.